This is really weird. It's weird. I don't know how else to express this. Matt Walsh parked on the side of a road talking about the age of consent hmm. when people can have sex. I mean, it's weird. It's weird. Uh, to be honest with you, as a parent, it's disturbing. Like, what's he doing on the side of the road? Do we know where he was located? Do we even know the time? I mean, this seems like it's a relatively recent video. I mean, I've been told, I, I don't know about you, Sam, but I was told growing up just to watch out for men kind of lingering in cars, especially if they say they have candy. I'm not saying that's what Matt Walsh was doing. It's just well, he we wasn't, have any proof otherwise. All we know is he's sitting in a car parked on the side of the road talking about how the age of consent really is a social construct, which of mm -hmm. course it is, uh, where society, but he thinks it's weird. He thinks it's weird that like there's, you know, that only the notion of consent makes sex okay. Uh, here he is both being theocratic and just sort of creepy. Let's mm -hmm. play this clip. Uh, the serfs, I think, un uh, uh, uncovered this video. Minds, we have really two categories. There are non-consensual sex, which is bad, and then we have consensual sex, which we think is always good. That's what we that's what we've that's what the culture says. That's what we a lot of us have uh, most of us. It seems like that's the idea that we have. It's like as long as they're consenting adults who choose to do this thing, then it must be OK. But the reality is that there is a lot of bad sex. There's a lot of immoral sex. There's a lot of disordered, gross, harmful sex that is nonetheless consensual pause it and i want you to understand we, we've got other uh clips of him uh talking about this understand that when you attack the notion of consensual sex it cuts both ways now it when you say that just you know our society is under this notion that like only consensual sex is good, but there can be bad sex that takes place if it's consenting between two adults. I mean, this is his theocracy. He believes that he uh, is the one who adjudicates what consenting adults should and should not do. But understand, if you undercut the notion of consent when it's given, you're also un undercutting the notion of consent when it's withheld. Mm. It cuts both ways. But you attack the notion of consent when it's given as being invalid because it's a lot less supposedly problematic than attacking the notion of consent when it's withheld. Consent is consent. And if you don't want that to be the marker of what people do, it gives you a lot of freedom to engage in stuff that is not consensual. It's just a point to bring up as this creep is sitting in his car. God knows where what he's across the street from. But go ahead. Bad sex. There's a lot of immoral sex. There's a lot of disordered, gross, harmful sex that is nonetheless consensual. All of the cases that I mentioned, all the cases I mentioned, um, they're all immoral, bad, gross, harmful. But they're not all rape. Some of them were, not all of them. And until we acknowledge that there are other ways to have immoral sexual relations with a person, until we reclaim sexual morality and sexual boundaries, we will be stuck trying to condemn all bad sex on the grounds of consent, which expands the idea of consent so broadly as to render it meaningless so that when we really need it, when there is actual non-consensual sex happening, it, it, we, we don't have any meaningful way to describe it because the word consent has, has become to, is, is, is increasingly means nothing because we've expanded it so much. Pause it, pause it, pause it, pause it, pause it. First off, what does that mean? The word consent has we've expanded it so much. What the hell does that mean? Consent it, just, is consent. We yeah. can have evidence of consent that we might need in a courtroom, right? This is evidence of consent. This is not evidence of consent. But the word consent, meaning I am of a certain age that society has deemed that I am able to give consent. And I have given or withheld that consent as evidenced by these things that society has determined are the markers of that, that is pretty obvious. 
But he's out there saying that the word consent is now meaningless and that you can actually, you know, that it that it shouldn't be applied to certain things. I mean, this is creepy, creepy, creepy stuff. Aside from the fact that, like, he's he's the one who determines whether two uh, consenting adults, the sex they have is OK. That's you know, that's just standard issue theocratic stuff. But this stuff where he's starting to undercut the notion of consent and that we can't really we, that's not the way that we should measure whether something's right or wrong. And when he talks about like actual, did he say actual rape? Yeah, he's something there, to that what, effect. Like that is the the concept, right? Like that that's what sunk uh, that Republican uh, candidate for what was his name? Aiken, for, uh, Todd Aiken. Todd Aiken. Rape. Yeah. 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 Actual legitimate rape. Legitimate Same rape, thing. Yeah. Your body is way shut. Well, what he's trying to do is is while pretending he's concerned for real rape victims, trying to walk back some of the progress that has been made on the concept of consent, which is if the victim is blacked out drunk, incapacitated, maybe n unable to consent in the way that would be where they're lucid or just other other uh, more expanded notions. He wants that to be essentially eliminated so that rape is only, you know, what you see in the movies or what co what uh, was done in wartime where it's forcible holding somebody down. Then we can include rape in that instance. But all this other stuff, let, let's uh, it's gone too far and it's hurting actual rape victims. Yeah. It meaningless so that when we really need it, when there is actual non-consensual sex happening, it, it, we, we don't have any meaningful way to describe it because the word consent has, has become to, is, is, is increasingly means nothing because we've expanded it so much and we've turned it into this complicated equation where nobody really knows when consent is happening mm, and even if a person does do. something willingly and is like yes let's do this and but even that might not be consent because we've turned consent into this super confusing uh calculus all right pause it let's i mean let's think about it. like you know like w w what are those instances where someone says yes let's definitely do this when it's not consent maybe when they are uh like you say, maybe they are um, incredibly intoxicated. Maybe they've been drugged. Maybe they don't have, maybe they are at an age where they are not, um, uh, they are not capable as society is deemed for offering consent. Because we have decided that a 14 year old saying to an adult, yes, I'm willing to engage in sex with you is not actual consent. This concept of informed consent is um, we have in, uh, in 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 medical treatment, uh, we have a concept in contract law that you can't even if you sign certain documents, you don't have the ability to actually consent to these things because those documents are so unconscionable that society is deemed that you can't enter into a contract that way. You can't enter into a contract to provide yourself as a slave. That is not an enforceable contract in our society. We have these concepts throughout the law. But for some reason, Matt Walsh, as he sits in a car across from who knows where, in the middle of nowhere, has decided that there's a problem with consent, that it's like, it's too nebulous. We've, we, have, we have put too much on the issue of consent. It's too nebulous. We, the word doesn't mean anything anymore, according to Matt Walsh. It's and very, when, very creepy stuff. Yeah, and when you, like, strip out the context of, you know, who has the capacity to consent, that puts the power all back in where Matt Walsh, it, M Matt Walsh wants it to be, which is in the power of the man, the power of the person who uh, has traditional, like, clout or has power over that other person. It's much, it's less about what society determines is right and more on the the more powerful man in that sexual interaction they have more discretion there let's uh let's play the uh the other clip let's play number uh i think it's number two this is where he um is is making that argument that there is no power dynamics in these things but he's also using this as a way of hiding the fact that the catholic church has been i think i, I mean 
I think this is undisputed, right? Has been the most systematic um, uh, institution that has allowed and covered up for, um, in terms of like a top-down organization uh, for uh, pedophilia and 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 this type of like child molestation. Um, this is a problem with the institution. I don't know if it's, I don't think that it's a problem with the religion per se, but certainly within the institution it was a problem. And I, uh, I, I mean, this is, I think, something that has been um, uh, completely uh, confirmed and accepted and articulated by the head of that institution, the Pope. But here he is running defense for one of these uh, these people who have run afoul to it. And of course, he's, he's trying to make it seem like, oh, this is more of just like a miscommunication actresses willingly have sexual relationships with powerful men sometimes for years asia argento herself i believe she was in a sexual relationship ongoing with harvey weinstein for like five years she she, she kept going back and engaging in this you know in this stuff with him and they do this for the sake of movie roles and so on and for more you know power and clout in the industry and then years later, after getting what they want out of it, they claim that they were being assaulted the entire time. And in the Catholic Church, you have um, you have some cases where, uh, like cases involving some Cardinal cases. McCarrick. You hear about Cardinal McCarrick and, and the controversy surrounding him. Now, there are accusations that he molested children. So, you know, that's in that category. But then, but then pause it. Yeah, pause it. Pause it. Pause it. Pause it. Let's see. I mean, could you imagine? Let's let's take the accusations that he uh, molested children. Let's just put that aside for a moment. That has no bearing on the dynamic that I'm going to talk about here. Put that we, aside we, for one second. Put that aside for one second. Put that put that aside. Put that put that aside. Yeah, let's just move. Put that aside. We we can ignore that for a moment because I've got another point to make here about that same individual and the fact that they use their position of power on people who are just employees of his, as opposed to the children. We put that aside. That is a really creepy, glib thing to put aside as you're sitting in this car across mm -hmm. from who knows where. But go ahead. And in the Catholic Church, you have um, you have some cases where, uh, like cases involving Cardinal McCarrick. You hear about Cardinal McCarrick and, and the controversy surrounding him. Now, there are accusations that he molested children. So, you know, that's in that category. But then, but then a lot of the accusations you hear about McCarrick and, and also with other, you know, some of these other things as well. These are, in some cases, he's having sex with seminarians. These are grown men who he allegedly lured into bed and then had sex with. But as a grown man, if you let another man lure you into bed. It's a powerful religious figure. And then you willingly, right. with no resistance engage in sex acts with, with him, no resistance does that belong in the same category as the 12 year old kids oh my all right can you pause it here i'm so sorry but like this is some of the concepts that we return to with libertarians about notions of coercion like because they want there to be a uh, uh the the power structure to remain static or even return to a time when certain people had more power over others they totally flatten power dynamics and pretend that coercion doesn't exist and that you're not able to essentially blackmail somebody about their career or about like i don't know anything in their life in order to force them into sex acts and that that's wrong like they want predators and people who think like matt walsh i'm not saying he's a predator but he th it seems to uh use very similar logic strains want that dynamic to be as flat as possible so that they can get away with whatever the hell they want to get away with and 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 let's be clear um nowhere in society do people equate pedophilia with uh, sexual assault or using your power uh, of being an employer and a powerful uh, figure in the institution that you're trying to, <coughs> uh, and, a, and a religious spiritual leader uh, with um, uh, trying to um, and cajole people into having sex with you if they're adults, because one is pedophilia, one mm -hmm. is statutory rape. The other is considered um at the very least wildly inappropriate and an abuse of your authority 
Yeah, and what was their abusive. problem with Bill Clinton and then? What was their problem with Bill Clinton then? If this is like exactly, I mean, except of course, of course you know, of course, uh, right. But but he creates this straw man that people are equating these two things as if they're identical, as opposed to both being bad in different ways. <laughs> and the y you have to wonder why. Yeah. Why is this? Why is it that he wants there to be so desperately? a um to create this notion that there's no distinction between these things and that he's seeing these distinctions he's sitting in this car talking about consent and how consent doesn't really mean anything and how power dynamics don't mean anything and how people equate pedophilia with other things that are like you know a little bit more a uh, gray area it's very very creepy and disturbing but continue with no resistance, engage in sex acts with him, does that belong in the same category as the 12 year old kids who are raped by men twice their size? I think clearly it doesn't. Um, and then you also have the accusations against Asia Argento, where a guy at 17, legal age, almost ev in, in almost every state in the union, um, willingly has sex with this, you know, 100 pound Italian model, making no effort to leave the room or leave the situation. Then he comes back, blackmails her, demands money for it and gets paid. And now he says he was traumatized by his willing participation in sex acts with a woman when he was a few months away from his 18th birthday. Does that belong in the same category as a woman or a child he who gets pinned down this? and raped by a sex predator? I mean, he, 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 like, like, wait. like, like what? First of all, in what universe, what category is he talking about? Like inappropriate? Is he talking about illegal? I mean, we have statutory uh, uh, rape laws in this country. Does he have a problem with that? I mean, the idea that you're close to your 18th birthday, he has an issue with parents conferring with a 17 year old and getting gender affirming care. I mean, he clearly has a, in other areas, Mm -hmm. A really bright line mm -hmm. that he's drawn on these things. But weirdly, when it comes to sexual relations, it gets blurry for him or something, or he's claiming all these straw men. I mean, honestly, somebody should look into this. This is weird stuff. I mean, I know it's very glib to say, like, he's obsessed with uh, the idea of of drag queens and uh, trans people because he's got some weird hangups and he's got these like uh, uh, prescriptions for people. But to pull over on the side of a road, I don't know what inspired him to do this. I got a lot on my mind about consent right now. <laughs> yeah, it's a weird, weird, disturbing thing that he's done here. This doesn't feel like it's political or academic. This feels like almost like a cry for help. I mean, what, what? Like, where is this guy? Why is he pulling over the side of the road? Did he just drop his kids off at school? <laughs> well, honestly, like, where is he? What, what, what errands did he just run, or is he going to that he feels compelled to drive drive on the side of the road and sort of justify these sort of notions about confusion about consent? Yeah, it really is. I, I think really somebody better look into this. This seems for, very problematic for all the talk of uh, the battlefield of ideas and stuff like that. Like this, what this is generically is them short circuiting communication because what you need for short for communication is a shared un, um, definition of important terms and on conversations that they don't actually, they want to stop um, in their tracks. They'll say like, I don't know what a concentration camp is, or I don't know what fascism is, or I don't know what authoritarianism is, what is even white nationalism or what is consent? Like that's just a way to stop the conversation. Actually. Yeah. It's very, uh, it's bizarre. And I guess uh, I don't know much about this Argento story, but apparently uh, somebody saying on the, I am that, that, that she was 20 years older than the kid who had just turned 17. I mean, look, the law is the law. If Matt Walsh wants to go out there and say that we shouldn't have an age of consent, which maybe he, he believes that's the case, um, maybe he thinks this is a gray area and there are certain people who could give consent or that maybe, gray, yeah. cons I mean, that's what he's saying. And it's saying consent is to me, like who gets on the topic of these like, allegations and then says, you know what the real problem is, is these false allegations though. Yeah, it's... Yeah. Um, it is, I, I don't know, this is disturbing stuff. Um, and, you know, again, this is the guy who says he's a uh, an expert on transgenderism and 
has like not even the most basic understanding of what the the numbers are going on, but he sees this massive problem. I mean, I, I don't know. I don't know what's going on there, but um, somebody should keep an eye on this. Honestly, it seems a little bit uh, scary. Um, I think that's it for our clips, right? Let's read some IMs. And what? then we're going to get out of here. Um, everybody's going to go have their, uh, get their uh, Thanksgiving meals ready. Mm -hmm. Anybody want to talk about what they're doing for Thanksgiving? Got to order a couple bowls of Chipotle to keep in the fridge. <laughs> <laughs> a feast for kings.